Okay, so we did a little bit of finding limits based on tables and graphs and stuff like that, but you need to be more comfortable with doing this for algebra stuff, or, or based on algebra, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So there's not a lot that I have to say here other than that you sort of need to be familiar with these definitions, and they'll start making more sense when you do them. So what they're just trying to say here is if you have a straight line, then the limit will be whatever value that straight line is, regardless of where you are. So if I'm coming from here, yeah, I'm going to end up at that point. And if I'm coming from here, ending at that point. Sort of the same idea if you have a, sorry, this was a horizontal line. The same idea if you have a straight line. You know, as this value is getting closer and closer to C, and this value is getting closer and closer to C, notice that you end up on this spot over here. Well, how does that work? Well, the first one, that's a constant, right? Two. Yeah. So this one says you're always worth two. So when you approach x, or when you approach one, what will you be worth? Two. And this one, this function is a negative four. So when you approach zero, what will you be worth? Negative four. And here it's just a matter of filling in the number. Okay, what's the limit of x when x goes to 4? Well, how much is it worth at 4? 4. And how much is a negative pi worth at a negative pi? And that's really all it is. It means that you can fill in numbers for limits if uh, you have constants or if you have uh, linear equations. All right. So then you can add and subtract some of this kind of stuff. So if you have a limit of a sum or the limit of a difference, then for the sum you would just add the parts and for the difference you would just subtract. Now to me, sum and difference is basically the same thing. Does that make sense? Because if I wrote A plus B here and A minus B here, what can I do so that I could write this as a plus? Can you do this? All right, so I just have one example. And it seems sort of weird to maybe do this, but if you do this, like the long way, and in this case, it wasn't really necessary, but we'll see that in just a minute. So this would be the same as saying the limit of x going to three for just the x, and then since that says subtract, we're gonna subtract from that the limit of x going to three, or x approaching three, at a negative 2, um, at a positive 2 at that point, sorry, because I did, I took care of the negative by saying subtraction, right? Well, based on the rules that you just saw, so based on this stuff over here, the limit of a constant and the limit of x, the identity function, well, what can you say then? Well, what is this one going to have to be worth? When x approaches 3, this is going to be worth 3. And this one, when x approaches 3, this one's going to be worth, so 3 minus 2 is 1. Okay, we'll see that in a little bit, that you can do that one much faster. Because x minus 2 can be qualified as what kind of a function? If you had to give x minus 2 like a comprehensive name, what would that be? Other than linear. Have you ever heard me say this word? Okay. So we'll, we'll learn a rule for polynomial functions because you don't need to split it for polynomials. But you do need to split it for certain other types. Okay, so well, what about a product then? Well, it's basically the same thing. You just take the limit of the individual parts and you multiply. So can you do this? Can I make this limit into the limit of x going to a negative one of three and multiply that by the limit of x, sorry, not sure why I wrote limit there, to negative 1 times uh, of x. Yeah, you're allowed to do that. This is still a constant, right? So this limit is worth 3. And how much is this worth? Okay, so that's a negative 3. Well, that would have fallen in the polynomial functions as well. Okay, so how often can I break this one up? This thing here makes this the limit of 2x minus the limit of 3, right?
and the limit of 2 times x could be written as the limit of 2 times the limit of x minus the limit of so we already had this one and then now you fill in each of the individual parts um, you'll see some examples at some point that will make this like this all seems like useless right not needed but we're doing this with easier functions so that you can see that it, it does work so this one's worth 2 because that's a constant that's just an x so that's an identity so that's worth 3 and a constant is always worth right so we do that so 2 times 3 minus 3 is 3 oh boy wouldn't have been a lot easier if I just plugged in the 3 there which eventually is what we're going to be able to do okay we'll see that sort of actually on the next one so moving on so the limit of a monomial would be what well so the reason we have all these little rules and then we combine them is so that you come up with some easier ways to do this so you don't have to break this up like don't copy this right now I don't have to break this up in the limit of x going to 5 of 2 times the limit of x going to 5 of x cubed and then I would have to write x cubed times x cubed times x cubed so I could split that up again and again and again well you don't have to do that Okay, hopefully you believe me now when I say that um, if this is given to you can you just plug in the 5 there you think yes so you can so this one really is just the limit of x going to 5 of 2x cubed all you really have to do is plug in the 5 here and figure out what it's worth which is worth how much 250 <coughs> okay so the same thing you can do over here instead of having to break this up into one difference one sum one sum and another difference and then breaking this one up into two parts this one up into two parts this one up into two and then this one into three and then etc etc hopefully you're getting the idea you don't have to do any of that um, because you can just plug this in and work out what you get and one of the main reasons for that is is what do you guys know about polynomials in terms of what happens when you graph them there are two words that definitely you should be looking for if I told you hey graph this polynomial your graph is going to be what two key words the graph of a polynomial is going to be I'll give you the first one smooth and continuous so that means that if you're looking for limits you never end up with something that looks like this right yes are we okay with that so you never end up with two spots that are different so you're not really meeting so all these are smooth and continuous so that means that the limits are going to work okay well that's not necessarily true for well powers it should work but not necessarily true for square roots or radicals and definitely not true for um, divisions so how do you deal with this one well this first one fits this pattern right yes so the way that you can do this is you can just take the power out and find the limit of the polynomial function that you're working with okay so you do have, I do think it's important that you understand that what we're going to do here is we're going to find the limit of x going to 0 of 4 minus 3x that's a polynomial function right 4 minus 3x is a polynomial and then we're just going to deal with the power after that so you can split it into two parts and this way makes it a little bit easier to find your limit which just ends up basically being plugging it in and figuring out what that is worth because the limit of x going to 0 of 4 minus 3x means you just do 4 minus 3 times 0 and then that needs to be raised to the 6th power and what's 4 minus 3 times 0 and 4 to the 6th happens to be 4096 if it's a square root you can do the same thing and why is that what can I do with this 
square root of n that would make it basically the same thing and this could be anything what can you do with a square root how can I write that so that it fits the same pattern here couldn't you write that this way 1 over n that's basically a power isn't it so it shouldn't be a surprise that you can find this limit by taking the square root after you find the limit of the polynomial function that's inside that square root so we're going to a negative 2 on here and then what do I have? I have 2x squared plus 5. So plug in the negative 2, square it, multiply by 2, add 5, that would be 9. Uh, sorry, that's 13. And then take the square root. So you get the square root of 13. Are you guys okay with this? <coughs> so essentially you are finished. Yeah, for a lot of these I'm just plugging it in. We'll get to these, you'll see it here in just a second. Not so much on the not so much on the next one, but on the five x minus sine x over x, you'll sort of see why it's important that you learn how you can break this stuff up. Okay, the limit of a quotient, so why are we, so that's a polynomial and that's a polynomial, right? And you can find the limit of a polynomial just by plugging things in. Does that make sense? Yes, no? Okay, and then this is important. We need to make sure that g of x is not worth zero. Okay, well, in this case here, that, that's not a problem at all, because if you plug in a 1 here, you get 2 minus 1, which is 1. So this one's gonna, this one's going to work without any trouble whatsoever. So, um, but I'm still going to write it the way that you are supposed to find it. So we're going to find the limit of that and divide it by the limit of this. And each of these is a polynomial function, right? So you can just plug in the one here, and we can plug in the one there and we can plug in the one there and add it all together and multiply it out and see what you get. Not sure what you get. Sorry. Thought I had it in my notes but I just thought I don't have it. So one cubed is one, right? So that's a negative four. Plus one minus two plus four. And in the bottom it's a little bit easier. We get two minus one. And then this simplifies to negative 4 plus 4 is 0. 1 minus 2 is a negative 1. So a negative 1 divided by 1. So this one's just plugging it in and seeing if it works. Does that work? Does what work? What do you mean plugging it in and see if it works? Um, well, basically, it 2x minus, when you plug it in the 1 here, 2 times 1 is? 2 times 1 is? And 2 minus 1 is? So since I'm not dividing by 0 here, which is important, I, I'm okay. I'm going to be able to just plug this 1 in, and it works. But if I did that here, because you guys are maybe wondering, well, why have we been doing this so far all this time? What happens if I plug in a 0 here? Okay, but this limit is definitely possible. You can find it. We just have to learn how to break it up in the right parts. So that's what I'm going to try to do here. So you can split this limit in a bunch of different ways. So the first split we're going to do is we're going to find this. We're going to write this as 5x minus x minus the sine of x over x. So why did I do that? Well, okay, if that's a subtraction, then I can find the limit of that subtraction by splitting it into 5x over x minus, and then I need to find the limit of sine of x over x. Are you, see how that breaks up? You can s divide it out into two parts, split into two parts, I mean, and then you have a subtraction, and the subtraction can be split into the first minus the second. Now, if you're not sure yet why did I do that, what happens here? What is 5x divided by x? What is 5x divided by x? Okay, well, now this first part, there's a limit that we can find. Correct? 
Yes? All right. Yes. And we actually found this limit the other day in the table, didn't we? Yes? And what and what was the value for that thing? Does anybody remember? And this is why you have to sort of keep track of things. So the first one's worth five. Does anybody remember what this one was worth from the previous notes? It's in your notes. If you're not sure, look it up. What was the limit of sine x over x? Can't split it up. Right? It just doesn't help because when x goes to 0, I plug in a 0, I'm still going to divide by 0. But I already know what that one's worth. Last notes, what was that worth? 1. one. And 5 minus 1 is? 4. Well, then we just found a limit there. Okay? All right, last problem. So part of limits is having to, um, it's sort of memorizing things that happen um, more frequently, sort of like identities, and then being able to recognize these parts and then being able to just plug in for them. So this question says, find the limit as x approaches 4. So I'm finding the limit of x approaching 4 of the average rate of change of the function f of x. Does anybody remember what rate of change is? Another word for rate of change is? Sometimes we use this word for it. And it's written this way, is the change in y, average rate of change is the change in y, that's our symbol for change, maybe I should write that this way, so that's the change in y, that's the delta, and then here it's the change in x. Average rate of change is how much does your y change relative to your x. So we need to find the limit of x going to 4 of delta y over delta x. And that's how you sort of pronounce that. So this symbol means change in, and it's pronounced as delta. All right. So let me rewrite it over here. Uh, how do you find your change in x? I mean, your change in y when we go from 4 to x. When you plug in x, don't you just get f of x? Yes? And then we're going to subtract from that the value of the function at at 4. That's your change in y's, and your change in x's is a little bit easier because it's just x minus 4. You guys okay with that? Imagine that x was worth 8, right? Imagine it was worth 8. Wouldn't the change in x be 8 minus 4 is 4? Maybe I should not have used 8. Let's make it 18. Wouldn't you do 18 minus 4 is 14? Isn't that the change in x? And sort of the same idea with the changes in y's. It would be the function at 4. I'm going to subtract that value from the function value at wherever we are next. Okay, so what's the function in this case? What function am I working with? Let me put this over here. I am working with a negative 2x squared plus x minus, and at 4, I'm worth how much? Well, this much, right? Are you guys okay with the top? I plugged in 4 here and here. Yes? Okay. And I'm just dividing that by x minus 4. What do you want me to plug in? Well, I don't know what x is. Now it's, that's, that's why I started. I end up at x. I don't know what x is yet. Right? 
on the top because this is this represents yeah the function when x equals 4 how much is it worth okay uh, clean this up a little bit a negative 2x squared plus x minus 4 squared is times a negative 2 is a negative plus 4 is Somebody already said it. Over x minus 4. Negative 2x squared plus x plus 28 over x minus 4. Okay, so now I'm finally at the point where I can write this limit in a form that we're familiar with, which would be I'm trying to find the limit of x going to 4 of a negative 2x squared plus x plus 28 all over x minus 4. Okay, now we're back at <coughs> what can you do with this? Well, you can split it up. This is a division problem, right? Yes, no. So I can find the limit of the top. Well, I can try to plug in 4 here. If I plug in 4 here, what happens? Right, so that doesn't work, right? So I can't just plug in the 4. That's unfortunate. So can I try to maybe factor the top? I'm going to pull the negative out. It's easier to factor for me if I have a positive 2x squared leading. What do you guys think? If this limit exists, what's probably going to have to happen? That x minus 4 is both a factor in the bottom and in the top, right? So that leaves me with 2x squared here, right? Alright, so this is my guess. Otherwise, this is never going to cancel. which is, It's going to cancel. So 4 times what number is 28? So that better be 2x plus 7. You can double check to see if that factoring works. But you can cheat the factoring here because you sort of have a pretty good idea that this bottom factor needs to cancel. So use it. So when if they do cancel, which they do, what can you find the limit of now? Well, just that part. And how do you find the limit of 2x plus 7? Huh? Put 4 in it. Okay. Now and this is why I usually use double brackets so see that negative there I sort of skipped it that negative is still here so this will be a negative 2 times 4 plus 7 which is how much is 2 times 4 and 8 plus 7 is so that will be it Okay, so last little blurb here is there are different ways to find limits and this is sort of the part where you're going to have to just get used to it, okay? Sometimes you can plug stuff in. That's basically what 1 is saying, okay? If f is a polynomial function then you can plug it in and see if it works, okay? If it's a polynomial raised to a power then you find it from the polynomial and erase it. Um, <coughs> number three again is referencing the fact that you know what often you can just plug in the value that you're looking for and plug it in see if it works if you're not dividing by zero with the quotient then whatever values you end up with that's your limit if that's not the case so then you're at number four so if that's not the case well maybe you have to factor like this one we had to factor and then we could just plug in a number or maybe you have to split it, like the very last one on this page, to 5x minus sine of x over x. Maybe you have to split it into a limit that you can find, like the limit of x going to 0 or 5. And then subtract a limit that you already know, the limit of sine x over x. And then that's sort of the trick here, is what, what are you supposed to do? Well, m so my first suggestion always is, well, just plug it in, see if it works. If it works, great. If not, then go look for things that are more difficult. Okay, so it's not always challenging but sometimes it can be